I'm no human. I have no eyes. I have no heart. I have no skin. Nor any bones. I'm different. I'm your worst nightmare. I'm the one that is that image that keeps you awake at night. I'm the one that turns your nightmares into reality. I'm the one who does you harm. I'm no human, I tell you. No questions shall be asked. I'm the one who eats at your soul as you slowly start to lose your own sanity. You see, someday you all will be just like me. You humans, you disgust me with your emotions, your voices, just everything you do. I love to see the look on your face when you wake up from me. Your nightmares. I'll always be with you. You have me. Be thankful. No, no, hiding under your blankets cannot save you. I can see you. I can hear your heartbeat. I know what you're thinking at this very moment. This can't be real. Newsflash, nothing's real. I mean, I mean, what if you were just like me? What if you're actually dead and you just don't know it? What if everything around you is imaginary? I just want to see you all suffer. I want you all to feel the pain. You all think I'm a joke? You do, don't you? I'm not a joke. I'll promise you that. I'm the one who lives inside your home. I'm the unexplained creaks and popping noises. I'm the only one who makes everything bad to you happen. You humans, you don't make sense to me. Why do you like living? All you do is die. Life is too hard. Why live it? That's all. Sweet dreams. Tinnitus, or ringing, is the perception of sound within the human ear and the absence of corresponding external sound. If you ever are in an area of absolute quiet, still your breathing and move not a muscle. After a few seconds, you will notice that the silence has a sort of sound of its own, a kind of empty ringing tone. This is nothing unique, everyone will hear this, given the proper setting. An informed person will tell you that your brain is trying to interpret the lack of stimuli to your hearing and so creates a bit of a filler sound. This ringing sound actually serves more of an arcane purpose, covering up a noise we are not meant to hear. This noise is not impossible to hear, and if you are persistent, you can effectively break the cover-up sound. The next time you are silent and hearing the ringing, shout at the top of your lungs for about half a minute then be abruptly silent. It will be different for everyone. Some will hear nothing different for dozens of tries. Others might pick up a soft murmuring. A special few auditory heroes might clearly make it out on the first attempt. What you will hear is a voice that relays an account of events about to happen in the immediate future. It's like a sportscaster relaying the events occurring 10 seconds into the future. As time goes on, you will be able to make out this voice under increasingly noisy circumstances, to the point that it can be heard at any time by just concentrating. Such an ability would doubtlessly be invaluable, right? You will be able to react to any immediate danger, relate to people around you with greater ease. No one would ever surprise you. Now of course, you are wondering what sort of horrible catch this ability entails. Perhaps the tone of the voice is so horrible that it will drive you mad. Or maybe the voice will only predict your death over and over again. Of course, this isn't the case. It's a normal voice and your ears receive it no matter what. It's simply a matter of noticing it. But there is a danger. For you see, where there is a voice, there is a body. And just like you will notice new sounds, so shall you notice new sights. More importantly, you'll be noticed. In June of 1972, a woman appeared in Cedar Senai Hospital in nothing but a white gown covered in blood. 
Now this in itself should not be too surprising as people often have accidents nearby and come to the nearest hospital for medical attention. But there were two things that caused people who saw her to vomit and flee in terror. The first being that she wasn't exactly human. She resembled something close to a mannequin, but had the dexterity and fluidity of a normal human being. Her face was as flawless as a mannequin's, devoid of eyebrows and smeared in makeup. She had a kitten clenched in between her teeth. Her jaws clamped so unnaturally tightly around it to the point where no teeth could be seen. The blood was still squirting out over her gown and onto the floor. She then pulled it out of her mouth, tossed it aside, and collapsed. From the moment she stepped through the entrance to when she was taken to a hospital room and cleaned up before getting prepped for sedation, she was completely calm, expressionless, and motionless. The doctors had thought it best to restrain her until the authorities could arrive, and she didn't protest. They were unable to get any kind of response from her, and most staff members felt too uncomfortable to look directly at her for more than a few seconds. But the second the staff tried to sedate her, she fought back with extreme force. Two members of staff holding her down as her body rose up on the bed with that same blank expression. She turned her emotionless eyes towards the male doctor and did something unusual. She smiled. As she did, the female doctor screamed and let go out of shock. And the woman's mouth were not human teeth, but long, sharp spikes. Too long for her mouth to close fully without causing any damage. The male doctor stared back at her for a moment before asking, What in the hell are you? She cracked her neck down to her shoulder to observe him, still smiling. There was a long pause. The security had been alerted and it could be heard coming down the hallway. As he heard them, she darted forward, sinking her teeth into the front of his throat, ripping out his jugular and letting him fall to the floor, gasping for air as he choked on his own blood. She stood up and leaned over him, her face coming dangerously close to his. As the life faded from his eyes, she leaned closer and whispered in his ear, I am God. The doctor's eyes filled with fear as he watched as he watched her calmly walk away to greet the security men. His last ever sight would be watching her feast on them one by one. The female doctor who survived the incident named her the Expressionless. There was never a sighting of her again. There once was an old man who lived in the rural countryside, with no one living for miles in any direction. Despite the feeling of total isolation, he liked the peace and quiet. Lately, his power has been going out frequently due to his aged and outdated generator that was stored in the cellar. He went to the city to purchase a new one. That night, he flipped on the generator and took a nice hot shower, the first in a couple of months. After that, he went to bed after a long day of work. He was just about to doze off when he heard the sound of water dripping. He was awakened by it, but paid no mind to it. But then, he heard it again. Eager to find out what it was and put a stop to it, he tumbled over to his bathroom, where he thought he might have left the shower slightly on. But the shower faucet and the shower itself were bone dry. He then assumed that maybe the leaking sound was coming from an old pipe in the cellar. The house was very old and much of the plumbing was rusted and damaged, so he went downstairs so he could prevent the leaking from getting his floor wet. When he got downstairs, he found the source of leakage, right next to the generator. It was very dark, the only lights being the two dim red lights indicating the generator was off. But he knew he was near a group of exposed pipes, so he put a towel and a bucket in that general area. The water was warm and almost felt thicker than water would usually feel. But the warm shower he took would explain that. He got up and shuffled back to bed, but continued to hear the leaking. The next morning, he went back down to the cellar with his tools to fix the pipes. When he arrived at the spot, he, be he began to inspect which pipe was leaking, only to find that none of them showed any signs of damage or leakage. 
He turned on the water to see if it would drip, but to no avail. He ducked under the pipes to retrieve the bucket and towel, and noticed that right where he placed them were patches of black fur. Confused, the man got his gear and started the generator so he could take his morning shower. Only to add to the confusion, he noticed that the generator didn't have any red indication lights. She was holding his hand tightly when he heard a noise come from off in the shadows. Beyond the ring cast from the solitary light above, he could see only darkness. She must have sensed his sudden distress as she placed her hand against his chest. Again, a noise. It sounded closer this time. They weren't alone in this park. Her heart was racing now to match his. He didn't speak as to hear better and gave her a look. Her eyes were wide open now. She must have heard it too. The noise came again. Something was moving in the bushes. The glint of eyes caught the light for just a second. He turned to meet her stare. She must have seen it too. Doom came over her in a wave. She tried to break away, to run, but he held her close. The noise of rustling leaves and movement came again as it came into the light. The cat stopped and studied them for a second before it re-entering the darkness. He sighed with relief and tightened his grip on her throat as he slid the knife from her chest. Her grip slackened and he smiled as he watched the life extinguish from her eyes. In Corona, California, there once was a road known by most locals as the Never Ending Road. Specifically, the road's true name was Lester Road. Now, over 20 years later, the landscape of Corona has changed, and the Never Ending Road is no more. However, years ago, Lester Road was an unlit road that people claimed became a never ending road when driven at night. The people who made such a drive were never seen or heard from again. The legend became so well known that people refused to even drive Lester Road during the day. One night, like many teens my age, I drove up Lester Road, but only a short distance, and in my headlights it did look like it went on forever. Frightened, I quickly turned around, because if I continued up the road, I thought I might never return again. Perpetuation of the legend convinced local law enforcement to investigate. Lester Road took a sharp left turn at its end, and there was no guardrails. Beyond the curve lay a canyon, and on the other side of the canyon was another road that lined up so well with Lester Road that when viewed from the correct angle, especially at night, the canyon vanished from sight, and the road seemed to continue on up and over the hill on the other side of the canyon. Upon investigation of the canyon, dozens of cars were found, fallen to their doom, with the decomposing bodies of the victims still strapped to their seats. A married couple who had just returned from their honeymoon decided to buy a house. The couple was very happy because they managed to get the house at a very cheap price. It was in a nice neighborhood, close to the city, and just a short walk from a shopping center. One day, the husband was walking down the hall and he, when he spotted a red crayon lying on the floor. The couple didn't have any children, so the husband wondered where the crayon had come from. Perhaps the previous residents left it behind, he said to himself, as he casually threw it in the trash. The next day, the husband came home from work to find another red crayon lying in exactly the same spot. He was very puzzled and decided to ask his wife about it. The wife grew pale in the face when he brought it up. She told him that every day since they moved into the house, she had been finding red crayons when she was cleaning. They were always lying in the same spot at the end of the hallway. The husband was standing in the hallway wondering about this weird phenomenon when he began to notice something wasn't quite right. The hallway was too short. 
He tapped on the wall at the end of the hallway and heard a hollow sound. Curious, he began peeling off the wallpaper, despite the protests of his wife. Behind the wallpaper, they found a pair of sliding doors. It was as if someone had carefully hidden the entrance to a closet or a small room. The husband discovered that the sliding doors had been nailed shut. He got a hammer from his toolbox and began prying out the nails one by one. After pulling out the last nail, he slowly opened the sliding door to reveal the small hidden room. Looking inside, they saw that the white walls of the little space were covered with words scribbled in red crayon. Over and over again were the words, Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Thank you guys for listening to yet another volume of my 7 Micropasta series. I hope you have a great night's sleep. And of course, by a great night's sleep, I mean one filled with your darkest nightmares. Ha ha ha.